Welcome to the Realtor for Hoopers podcast. When I pull up with my dogs, we gonna ball like swish. No, I ball like No, I ball like All right, today for episode 13 of yeah. the interview series, for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, we have a one of my favorite men in this world, always brings positive energy and someone that I've got connected to t- basketball at the courts in North Glen, actually. Yep. I think it's the first time we ever met. Yep. Um, ever since been uh, following him, but uh, Malcolm Y, a.k.a. Malcolm Wise. Yep. Um, so, Malcolm, appreciate you. Appreciate it, dog. Thanks, Thanks for having good. me. Oh, yeah. Good. So the first question we always ask is tell us your basketball story. Man, um, a lot of people don't know this, but I was I was born and raised in Denver, but when my parents split, I went back and forth from here in New York. Okay. So before uh, music, before football, my first love was basketball. Okay. I grew up right next to a park in New York City where I, I would just walk to the courts every single day when I was out there and play ball from literally sun up to I sun down for hours. Yeah, it's if you if you play basketball in New York, you that like makes you into a real hooper. Like you don't call sure. fouls, you don't do anything like that. It makes you into like yep. a legitimate hooper. Turns yep. you into a man real quick. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I grew up. That was my first love playing basketball out there. So grew up out there. Started playing um, obviously in high school out here. And you then, went to Mullen. Yeah, I went to okay. Mullen. Uh, ended up falling in love with football. So basketball kind of took a back seat. Okay. Um, once I got done with football and just kind of into my adult life, um, yep. I found basketball again, which is kind of where I started playing at the courts and yep. just started, you know, re rekindling some of those relationships that I had in high school. And um, basketball has always been a huge part of my life. Man. man, for sure. And I think one of the most unfortunate things about football, but one of the great things about basketball is that there's not pickup football games. Exactly. You know, yeah, like yeah. once your once your football career is done, yeah, you can maybe mess around with some flag football and yep. things like that. But like, that's what's. I mean, basketball you can play until you're 50, and you can always find a run somewhere. Usually, and even if you, you can't know? find a run, you can just take a ball to a court and shoot around. Yep. This is like one of For the sure. few sports that you can do that and really like zone out of everything. You really just need a ball and a hoop. Yep. You know what I mean? Yeah. For sure. Well, man. So when we first met, um, I got. I really started trying to follow you because you started having, you had had a podcast called Mindset of a Hustler yep. and you, you know, you were always been about personal development, you know, really trying to help people and things like that. And then you kind of s- switched and kind of went after your rap career. Yep. So like, talk to me about what, like, what motivated you just to just flip it and just go right straight after your rap career that's since got gotten to where you are today yeah man um like you said i was doing the podcast for a while i was very big and still am into self-development and um, just becoming the best person that you can be and i was trying to do that with my podcast which was teach people how to you know live the life that they want to live essentially mm-hmm. and do the things that they want things that you're doing you know sure. interviewing people and starting businesses and all kinds of stuff because yeah. a lot of people don't learn how to do that sort of sure. stuff but it starts with your mindset right absolutely so um, I started doing that, and then really I've always had this love for music, but I was kind of not taking my own advice in a way where I was like kind of music was on the side burner. It was just something I would do just for fun here and there um, and never really took it serious. Yeah. And it wasn't until uh, my grandma passed away a few years back hmm. um, where one of the best pieces of advice she gave me was just like, you just kind of got to do whatever you want to do in life. Life is short. Like yep. She was like, I've, I've worked jobs that I've loved. I've worked jobs that I hated. At the end of the day, it's just about doing what you love to do. Yep. Um, she passed away kind of right before COVID hit and, you know, I kind of used that as an opportunity to dive headfirst into music and I made my first song based on her. Um, and the feedback from it was crazy. And that was, a, um, I'm, I recorded that. Um, and that was just kind of like my welcome to like music moment, you know, so that I mean? was 2022, 2020, something like that. Hey. I, don't, man, I don't even remember, man. It was, it was a <laughs> um, uh, so I made that song and the feedback on it was crazy. Yep. And then I had a, a buddy of mine who was about to do a show and he was like, I know that you've been kind of working on music. Do you want to do a show? I had no music created for the show. Um, basically a month before the show, I, I, I created my first uh, EP, which is called Before the Street Lights Come On. Um, I made all those songs for that show so that mm. I could put that EP out. And ever since, it's just been kind of taking off. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't it funny where, like, to your point of your grandma's advice that, that, once you kind of find your thing and find something that feels so natural to you, yeah. that waking up every day and going after that comes so easy. Yeah. Yeah. Like the, 
the idea of like, there's no like, man, I got to do this again. Yeah. Or man, I got to like, whatever. Yeah, there's going to be ups and down days. But like, once you find your thing, mm. I call it your thing, mm -hmm. waking up and going after it's easy because you just love every moment of it, right? Yeah. You know? And so, like you said, there's there's definitely ups and downs. It's not, it's not uh, you know, when you start going after what you want to do, it's actually usually harder than like doing, you know, um, like a regular nine to five or whatever yeah. it may be. Um, but it's, it's a hundred percent worth it. Cause you, you reap the benefits and of everything that you have created, you know? For sure, man. Yeah. Yeah. And we got the background changing here. There we go. A oh, weekend. <laughs> <All right. laughs> um, so next question is, is of all your songs, mm -hmm. cause now you've got a lot of songs yep, out there now. Yeah. Yep. What is a song that you feel like has like blown up the most? Mm -hmm. And then, because a lot of times it's not the same, and yeah. then which is your favorite? So, yeah, two-part yeah. question. Um, great question. My Let's start with my favorite song. Okay. Uh, my favorite song is the first song that I created. It's called What You Make It. Um, okay. That was the, the song that got me started in music and kind of made me realize that I could do this for a, a living and, yeah. like, travel around the world now to do it. Like, that was a song that I was like, yeah, you're, you're – and you're good. You know yeah, what yeah. I mean? I hate to toot my own horn, but, yeah, yeah. like – there's a certain point where you're like, damn, I actually can, like, I'm yeah. good at this. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean, for sure. So that was that song. Um, the song that's blown up the most right now, um, it's probably two, but the biggest one probably right now is a song called Please with me and my boy DNA Picasso. Shout out to him. Um, that's been on the radio. Uh, we're trying to get it. That's a song that should be like all over the clubs and all kinds of stuff. Yeah. But uh, it's a really dope song. Um, him and I are working on some more music together. So, cool. yeah. Sweet. One of the songs that I, uh, the first song that ever um, someone came to me and said, I, don't you know this guy <laughs> that created this? Is he, you created these diss tracks. Yeah, yeah. And he had an Apple diss track. Yeah, uh -huh. And somebody <laughs> heard it on TikTok yeah. and then came to me like a week later and like, don't you know that Malcolm dude? And I'm like, yep. Uh, <laughs> so, so I've done three of those now. So the first one I did was the Apple diss track. That one took off on social media. It's got like four and a half million views or something like that. And I did a Netflix one, which again, like, um, went crazy on social media. But probably the biggest one out of those yeah. is the Broncos this that I did last year. Broncos <laughs> have been struggling, as y'all know. Obviously, hopefully some things yeah. change around. Yeah, yeah. Big diehard Broncos fan. But, you know, they were disappointing me, so I had to do something for that. But That's awesome. Man. That one got me featured in Barstool Sports and, like, Hot New Hip Hop and a bunch of a bunch of stuff. Yep. Wow. Yep. That's cool, man. Yep. Well, good. Well, um, so the uh, – one of the questions I wanted to ask you is of all of all time mm -hmm. of rappers that can hoop. Mm -hmm. What are the top three all time? That's a really good question. Cause there are a lot of really good like hoopers. That hey, I'll say, maybe I'll say hoopers. rappers slash entertainers. Cause yeah, yeah. I know we can uh -huh. muddy the waters a little bit there, but like rappers slash entertainers. Okay. And I got my three. Okay. So we'll talk if... All right, I'm going to do one. You do one. We'll just go back and forth. Okay. Uh, my first one, and this is probably obvious to everyone, my favorite rapper is J. Cole. J. Cole, obviously. He's on my list. Yeah, J. Cole's on my list. Um, he obviously did. Uh, most of his themes are around, like, uh, being cut from the team yeah, and like, yeah. all kinds of stuff. But cool thing about him is he didn't let that stop him, and even now he was playing overseas and, like, yeah, all yeah, kinds yeah. of stuff. So that's a super dope story. So J. Cole's my number one. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to say number two. I'm going to go a little bit of old school. Is okay. Master P. Ah, uh, yeah, Master P was not. Nice. Yeah, he could hoop. Uh huh. So he's celebrity All Star Games. Yep. He was the first rapper that really started putting one work in those celebrity All Star Games. You uh -huh. could see him going to he would go to New York and play. Yep. And all that kind of stuff. I used to watch his highlights. He was pretty good. Yeah, so that's my number two. Um, I would go with Dave East. So oh. Dave East is a is another artist that um, he's a sniper out here. Yeah. Uh huh. And he the, all these dudes are tall. You yeah. Know what I mean, and you never think, but like he could he could definitely. Okay, yeah. so my third, my third, which I was saying, it was Chris Brown. Okay, yeah. So Chris Brown can hoop. I've seen him play. What's like, that league that he's in? Um, uh, that's that league with all the other celebrities that he's in, with like uh, Quavo and all them. Is that EY? Like is that EYBL? Something like that. Ah. No, no, I don't think it's that. I don't know. I know what you're talking they about. Like about teams and yeah, they like build up teams and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Nah, he can hoop for sure. For sure. Yeah. Okay. I'll throw one too on the reverse: a hooper that can rap, Dame Lillard. Oh yeah, Dame. He can spit. Yeah, he can. I've, I've seen, seen Kevin Durant and I've seen Shaq get into it. Yeah, too. yeah, it's been dope to but see. But Dame's like Kevin Durant and Shaq can like <laughs> can 
flow a little bit, but like Dame's a rapper. Got it. Yeah. Like yeah. if he, I mean, after his basketball career, he could start rapping and have a career. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he's even like he's been making pretty good money off his rap career. I'm yeah. sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, people just buy the record because they're fans of him. That'd be a solid squad right there. Oh, yeah, <laughs> that'd be a super solid squad. Yeah, yeah. Especially <laughs> if you get Shaq in the middle. Oh out. yeah. <laughs> Easy. Love it, man. All right. Well, um. So the last question we always ask everyone is tell us your basketball or sorry. Wow. <laughs> last question is, is what is your favorite thing about who? Man, we kind of talked about it earlier, but um, with basketball for me, it's, it's a way to like clear my head. Mm. You know, um, a lot of things go on in life and I'm sure everyone has that one or two things that they can go to where it's just like, I can do this at any time. And it just like, everything else kind of stops, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. I don't have to think about anything, anything like that. That's what hoop has always been for me. Um, I've been able to meet some really incredible people with, with basketball, you mm -hmm. including, um, a lot of my closest friends I grew up playing ball with or just play ball with now. And there's nothing like the basketball community, man. Like, yep. Everyone supports each other, whether that's, you know, um, in their endeavors that they're doing with their social media, with their businesses, it seems like everyone wants to be involved in just your life and like mm -hmm. who you are as a, as a human being. Yep. You know, and that's something that you can really only find on like a competitive sport like basketball. You know yeah, what I mean, so um, I'm I'm grateful for basketball. I'm still playing. I'm gonna play till you know till I can't. Yep. And I'm grateful for people like you who who take time out of your day and like had had I not been playing basketball, we never would have met. No, nope, you know for what sure. I mean? So the connections is one of my favorite. Absolutely things. too, man. And uh, I think going back to where you're saying is it kind of clears your head. Is I remember like in high school, like one of the you know toughest parts, toughest parts of life for everyone. When you're just trying to figure who yep. you are out and whatever. Yep. Man, if I just need to think, and still to this day, if I just need to think, I, I just go to a gym and just shoot yeah. free. I'll just shoot a hundred free throws back and forth because I'm just thinking. Yeah. And it just starts like letting things go and like all that, man. There's something about ball and just being by yourself too. And yeah. then even then, if you just need to get some aggression out mm -hmm. and whatever, hooping and yeah. talking and yeah. you know all that, it's – it's a beautiful game, man. For me, uh, uh, an empty gym is like a blank page. Oh, like man. You can go out there and just kind of do whatever you want. You yeah. know what I mean? And there's a there's few feelings like that where you just create something from scratch. You yeah. know what I mean? So it's very similar. Yeah. Sure. Well, I kind of flipped the script on you. So what I want to end with is um, you got a tour coming up, your yeah. first you know, nationwide tour. Yeah. So tell uh, first part of that first part of the question is tell us about that tour, sure. all that. And the second question is like how we best can support you. You know, I know people here in Denver and Colorado can go to the show and all that, but like how can we best support you in general and with the tour and all that? So kind of a two part question. I kind of mend those two because I think they probably. Cool yeah, too. absolutely. So um, like Adam said, I'm going on tour with uh, Mark Battles, who's a big artist. He's been making music for the longest time. He's going on a, uh, 14 city tour. He might do some more stops after that. We'll see how it goes. Might do some international stops, but, um, linked up with them and I'm, I'm super excited about this tour, man. It's, it's something that very few artists, at least from Denver have been able to do as far as like tour to different cities and just do something that you love. You and it know? starts in a couple of weeks, right? Yeah. It starts on the 13th. Our first show is in Lawrence, Kansas. So cool. that'll be, that'll be dope. Sweet. Um, so got linked up with them. We're going on a road. Um, uh, really the whole point of the tour, obviously to, promote the music but uh, also to kind of put colorado on like a, a national spotlight because i believe there's a lot of dope talent here mm -hmm. not just in music but in basketball yeah. in you know arts and yeah. um entrepreneurship brands all sorts yeah. of stuff so i really do want this to be like if if you've got a brand or something that you want to rep um you know let's partner and let's let's make it happen because sure. I, I do think that more eyes need to be on colorado for a lot of things um so that's happening the best way that y'all can support um, honestly, I'm, I'm a hundred percent independent. So everything's self-funded. Um, I've already paid for most of the tour myself, but I did start a GoFundMe. should be somewhere in my, um, Instagram or something yep. like that. Um, if you want to support that way, that would definitely help out. But honestly, just send some words of encouragement. We're going to be gone for about a month. Um, so just, you know, anything helps. I'm just let it know, you know, yeah, you're doing yeah. a great job. You know, it's going to be long, uh, long process, a long tour, but, um, that's really it, man. Follow us on social media, continue to support Adam and what he's doing. Um, and support all your local creators, man. We do a lot of things. Um, we come out of pocket for a lot of things. Yeah, we, we, sure. we, we spend our own time, right? Outside yeah. of everything else that we're doing to, you know, support other people. So that's really what it's about, man. If you could support us or support someone else, then I, I think you should do it. Sure, man. 
All right. Well, Malcolm, I appreciate the time, man. Yeah, Cause always you, good luck Bob. with the tour. Thank you. Um, yeah, man, I, uh, I want to acknowledge you for just from the first moment I get you, not only you hustling grinder on the court, but also just always, everything has been a positive energy and no matter what you do. Mm -hmm. And that's something that is infectious and it's only going to help you grow whatever entrepreneurship, rap career, whatever you want to do, like that's just going to help you, man. So keep that up, man. I appreciate it. Can I give some flowers too, man? I appreciate you. Um, <laughs> Adam is one of the few people that does and walks what he lives. Hmm. Like for him to post as much content as he does, it inspires me. I know it inspires a bunch of other people. Um, it's hard to like do what you do man. Yeah, and to, it. to, to give other people a spotlight for that and to interview other people and to put their stories out there means a lot to a lot of people, mm. man. And like I said, for you to go as hard as you do on social media, bro, like with, um, the trick shots, with everything that you're doing, put your family involved. Yeah. And I know that you do some other things for your yeah. family too, man. Uh, you're, you're a hundred percent family man, but you're a community man. And I just appreciate you. Dog. Really? Yeah. Respect, man. Thank you. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Hi, bud. Thank you. When I pull up with my dogs, we gon' ball like swish. Swish, swish. No, I ball like. Swish, swish. No, I ball like.